Hi, 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 hello friends. Welcome to T Academy. In this video, we'll discuss the important topic of a power system that is search impedance. And this is a very important topic for all the competitive exams and uh, those who are setting the paper, they will also think at least one question from this topic. Okay. Uh, if you are new to this, my channel or, to, or this video, please subscribe to my channel and share with your friends. And uh, uh, if you like this video, just make a comment. Okay. Now we will discuss the basic important points of this. What is the search impedance and what is the characteristic impedance in this video. And uh, after completion of this video, we can uh, learn about, we can know about the difference between the characteristic impedance and the search impedance. And you are able to perform these three questions on the screen. Okay. So please uh, watch the video from starting to till the end. And uh, don't miss the concepts here. So first of all, we'll know what is the characteristic impedance and what is the search impedance. Okay, uh, listen to this video carefully. First of all, what is the characteristic impedance? We'll write here first of all, characteristic impedance. Characteristic impedance. It is denoted by Z suffix C here. First of all, if you consider a transmission line, the transmission line is having a four parameters that is resistance, inductance, capacitance like this. Okay, it's go on like this. Okay, let us assume we are having a sending end voltage and we are having receiving end voltage. We are here. The four transmission line parameters are resistance, conductance, inductance and capacitance. Okay, so these four components will make opposition to the current flow. There is nothing but impedance. Okay, that uh, the characteristic impedance means all these four parameters will be present in the transmission line and which will make the current to distortion to have some opposition that impedance called characteristic impedance. Now, what is the difference between the characteristic impedance and the surge impedance? So first as per the definition of characteristic impedance ZC is the square root of so R plus J omega L divided by G plus J omega C. Okay, this can also be written as okay. See here, this impedance also be we can find when the receiving end voltage either open circuited or when the receiving end voltage is short circuited. So these two conditions are there. The characteristic impedance is also defined as is a square root of the open circuit impedance when you are looking from the sending end side. Okay, and ZAC is a ZAC is a impedance when you are looking from the sending end when the receiving end is short circuited. So characteristic impedance can be also be written as is a square root of open circuit impedance into short circuit impedance here. So this is the important definition you need to remember. Now as per I said as I said that the difference between the characteristic impedance and the surge impedance is surge impedance is nothing but the characteristic impedance at when the resistance and the conductance is equal to zero that is is equal to zc is equal to okay i can write as zc is equal to square root of when the r value is made zero zero plus j omega l divided by zero plus j omega c now as you can see j omega j omega gets cancelled it's nothing but square root of l by c so this is what is a characteristic impedance oh, sorry it is surge impedance sorry here yeah, i'll write surge, surge impedance now the surge impedance is nothing but the characteristic impedance at the resistance and the conductance is zero. And you don't confuse that the resistance is proportional to one by conductance. If you make it zero, whatever the conductance is infinite, you know, no, it's not like that. So these two are the different parameters in this circuit. Don't combine with your basic concept of R and G. Okay, it's a basic property. Now, now this the surge impedance ZS is equal to square root of inductance divided by capacitance we know the basic formula from the power system transmission lines uh, which i discussed in my previous video of power system for us there you can see this inductance is equal to okay let me take here l1 so l1 is nothing but inductance here is equal to mu naught mu r divided by 2 pi into ln of natural logarithm of d by r the units are henry's per meter and the c1 assumed as okay 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon r divided by natural logarithm of d by r it is faraday's per meter but in the given definition zs is square root of l by c okay 
now i want to convert here so let is the uh, i'll let l1 be the distance in meters now what is the total inductance i can get here it is nothing but square root of if you write the same formula here it is a unit having of inductance henry now i will write the same inductance so this definition is actually having units of henry's per meter if i multiply l1 with the small l1 henry's per meter into meter becomes henry so l1 into small l1 divided by c1 into l1 why i am saying because i will give you important conclusion here l1 l1 gets cancelled it is nothing but square root of l1 by c1 that means the surge impedance is independent of length of the lines very very important conclusion based on this we will get a one question okay i will write here zs is independent of independent of length of transmission line if you open the cl was a textbook the first question you can see in the cl was a text back side textbook bits the first question is this one only so zs is independent of length of the transmission line okay and uh, i'll give one more point here examination point of view, important point suppose here if you substitute all the values v naught and mu r and this is all the values then you can see that the zs values are different different values so zs value is it is having 400 to 300 to sorry 300 to 500 ohms for a overhead transmission line and the same value for it is a underground cable means 40 to 50 ohms for underground cables and this will be very very important for examination point of view that is for a free space so for a free space it is 120 pi value so zs value is 125 is nothing but 377.7 so it's very important especially for tneb exam okay they will ask the question directly away because it's a combined with some signal systems also okay these are the basics about this search impedance now we'll see the questions here some important questions here see uh, i'll take this question here i'll take this question the surge impedance of a 400 kV 100 km transmission line is a 300 ohms for a 200 km length of the length the line surge impedance will be so tell me the answer as we know that the surge impedance is independent of the length of the line so for it is a first of all 100 km it is fixed is 300 ohms it won't change for 200 km so answer is 300 ohms only okay why because zs is independent of length okay now you we'll see next question here next question a transmission line sections shown an input impedance of 36 ohms and uh, 64 ohms respectively when the short circuited and over circuited what is the characteristic impedance just now we see in the formula characteristic impedance is equal to zc is equal to square root of zoc into zsc square root of uh, 36 into 64 Okay, if you solve this, we will get it as a 48. Okay, so 48 ohms answer. So answer is 48 ohms. So answer is D is a right answer for this question. And this is a basic question. The characteristic impedance of a transmission line with a series impedance Z ohm per unit length and shunt admittance y, y most per unit length is given by. So what is the formula? Zc is nothing but square root of Z by why so answer is c is the right answer so thank you friends thanks for watching my video if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and share with your friends have a nice day